Hey up everybody, today we're going to continue with Tamiya's F-35 part number 4. We're going to get basically take the aircraft and get it all finished off, ready for main paint next week. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so back again on this guy, looking beautiful. We see a beautiful detail at Weapons Bay. Um, just spoils it kind of having on the ground. It almost wants to be in flight on some kind of stand because, he, yeah, that's a beautiful detail in there. Um, really going together really well. A um, few little things here and there. Um, just kind of figuring out. This is a new kit. Never built it before. Just kind of figure out the assembly and options of doing it. Um, last week, you know, with the weapons bay, just figure out certain ways to make painting easier, which we kind of talked about. Now we're going to basically, as I mentioned in the intro, we get this thing ready for painting next week so all the um i think we're going to go ahead and put on all like the um stabilizers the horizontal stabilizers the tail planes the flapper arms leading edges all that kind of stuff because we can paint that together i don't think we necessarily paint them separately so all that's going to go on um we'll get all these covered up there are i think i mentioned last week you get two options you get you have doors closed or doors open or different parts so we're just going to attack in some of the closed doors to cover this um, save any masking and we'll just paint over it and just remove them and then at the very end we're adding the open doors uh, that kind of stuff so yeah looking good so let's kind of run through the instructions and see what we've got going on um, as always so i think we took care of all of this last week and we're pretty much up to 19. so we're going to do the nozzle um some interesting painting we figure out there with different colors i think there's two parts to help again with masking so you paint one one color the other one the other and it's going to sandwich together and then you're not going to have to worry about masking. Um, gear is pretty simple looking. And um, here's where we get into some information about the um, main landing gear covers, like the doors. We don't want to apply, um, again, we want to use them as covers so we can paint um, and not mask anything. So these inner parts, which hold them open, we're not going to use. Um, so if you want it in flight, actually, with doors closed, you're not going to use A15 or 16. Um, but if you want doors open, which I'm going to do because it's on the ground, you need to apply these two parts on the back. So again, we'll do this later on once we painted the fuselage because we want these parts closing flush so we can paint just all in one go. Um, again, with no masking. Working through here again, different. Um, the nose gear, um, again, we're not going to apply any of the back pieces because we can use them as um, basic fillers for painting. Um, so apply that later on. Um, we do have like a little um, an EOTS sensor to go on here and um, a part to go over it. And spoiler, I've already gone ahead and um, added all the masking, which again, super tiny pieces of masking tape, um, which comes with it, fortunately. So I cut these out, stuck them on, um, and we just need to paint behind it on the fuselage, which is going to be white, um, and then this guy, and then this goes over the top, and we just paint it all as one. These not these are the open doors we're going to have at the very end after we painted the fuselage, so we don't need to worry about this page necessarily. Um, one thing I will note before I forget, um, this metal bar, which goes through 37 and through the, um, outer weapons bay thing. I just added a lot of soup. It, it, it proves no, there's no mechanism or no, it just for, for, um, appearance reasons for aesthetics. So I just add a little touch of super glue to the end, thread it through. So it's stuck in place. and doesn't keep sliding. Um, so it's no, it's not like it holds in place that pivots or anything. It's just, just visual appeal, I guess. Um, so go on, again, just pretty straightforward. Flap arms, you're going up or down. We're going to go down. So just follow these pieces here. Um, again, I just want to build my aircraft. I like a little bit of visual appeal and like you know, moving things slightly like rudders, that kind of stuff, rather than having everything all flat in one kind of surface. Um, yeah, so you've got your flaps, flap arms going on. You've got your leading edges. Again, just two parts, pretty straightforward. It's all going to be the same color. So we just put them all as one. Um, two piece tail planes again nothing really to show there probably just I don't just two pieces um, it's nice the way they go you know you can tell the left and right this it's not going to be any confusion going on there and same you know the way they've done the tabs on these leading edges you can tell which if it lefts and rights again it's, it's pretty well done nicely engineered um, and that pretty much takes us through the like weapons um, vertical stabilizers we'll do that as well ordnance we'll do on a different part and um, that pretty much takes us through the whole instruction so Quick down and dirty. So basically we're just doing all the little jobs now to get this thing put together and again, ready for paint next week. So it won't be a huge part by any means. 
Um, because all this stuff, I don't need to show you how to put two parts of a flat together. It's pretty self self-explanatory. So I'll go ahead and start walking through some of this stuff and keep checking back in and show you my progress as always. Okay, so a little update here. As you can see, we're taking shape nicely and we've got the lee edges on, the flapper arms, the tail planes, all that kind of stuff. And looking really good. I didn't really show that. All of that are just two parts that glue together per instructions and you just glue them in. I mean, it's not perfect fit, nothing to talk about there. Um, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so I've had all that stuff. Um, we talked about it in part number three. Um, these are missing instructions, the floor parts on the front, which we need to get on before we paint the fuselage. Now, painted behind it silver, applied the, the clear parts. Um, there's tiny little masks. I think it's URM, I forget. But whatever two little masks you have left, the shape's pretty apparent. They just go on there on each side. Um, so once you paint all over this, with the fuselage, try and paint it and peel that off. You'll see a little silver behind it. Um, it's what I've done. I'm not sure it's accurate or not, but again, they're not on the instructions. Now, remember, I have holes at the top here. Because I'm doing a aggressor, and these are training sensors we're going to put on, which come in the kit. If you're doing like a in-service, um, active, like service, operational jet, you're not going to drill these holes because they're not going to have those um, sensors on. Now, I did forget to drill um, for the pylons. I wasn't going to do pylons on this one. Um, I still might do that. I might just um, just glue them on, or if not, I have another kit. So I can also look at my other kit and see where the holes are, measure it, and drill the holes, which is not a big deal. But as always, I forget to drill the holes. So this does have a couple of... Um, I'm doing version B, which is the air air mode, so it does have a pylon um, on each wing, which again, I forgot to drill the holes, which is no biggie. Go to this heart part here where the sensor goes at the front. Um, I'm just going ahead and just I need to blend it anyway, so because it's white, I just need to paint this in. Um, then we're going to have the clear part, well, the sensor, and then the clear part over the top. So this is really up it for the fuselage, and then just working through gear, put the gear together, no problem at all. A few parts, follow the instructions, nothing really to talk about there. Primed up in black and then ready to be painted white. So again, yeah, pretty easy instructions. Nothing really to talk about. Canopy comes with a canopy mask set. That's all masked up, no problem at all. Again, we get two back canopies. Um, you get one for open and one for closed. I'm just gonna have it permanently closed. So I'm not gonna paint two canopies. Um, I'm just gonna have it closed and it should be no problem at all. Um, gear doors, built those up and primed as well. As well. See here, uh, really good engineering on this to talk about. So you've got all these kind of, um, I guess the brackets, which, you know, the arms, which hold it to the side, it's two pieces. So you're actually going to put them in behind and then um, glue the front on, on both of these. Now, if you just do one at a time, you kind of know where they go. Plus each one's differently shaped as well. So when you slot them in behind this piece, when you glue them, they can only go one way. So if you do get a little bit lost, um, you, you know which way to go, so, you know, and they, um, yeah, so that's goes through there. Um, it does mention to use metal primer for this metal pin here. You know, I'm never going to touch it and or play with it or anything like that. So I just use um, Mr. Servicer for everything, and that's going to be more than enough um, primer. I don't need to get a special metal edge primer just for this pin. No, no way at all. Um, so it's going to be inside the weapons bay. So it also gets primed up and painted. Um, oh, well, obviously primed it needs to be painted. Um, but again, perfect engineering. Just follow the instructions, as I mentioned earlier, or maybe in the last part. Just a tap, touch of super glue on the end of the pin just to hold it in place so it doesn't slide out. And that's kind of really where I'm at now. So I'm, I'm making a lot of progress here. So I'm going to start painting up the um, parts white. Um, now I've primed them and get the decals on, the gear. I've um, got the tires, two pieces um, tires and wheels. Um, get these all painted up and they're going to fit on. I think go a certain way. You can see there, so they fit a certain way. And um, get it all put together. So yeah, although we're not going to put the gear on now, I'm just getting it out of the way. So a few little jobs to do, I'm going to get going on those and I'll be right back. All right, so make some progress here, some good news and some bad news. So the doors here fit on really nicely. Um, so we paint over it. These guys back here, they just don't want to fit. I mean, so if you're using like extra thin cement, you can, you can pop it in and bend it and hold it in place. It'll glue no problem at all if you like doing wheels up. But just using some PVA glue just to hold it in place while we spray so we're not damaging the paintwork and pull it off, it's just not going to happen. I mean, you have to put it in, bend it, and it's just too much pressure. So PVA glue won't hold it. I tried taping it, all kinds of stuff. So in the end, these two are just going to get the old foam treatment and just, um, I'm just going to spray it and have to then respray the mask and respray the white around the edge. Um, probably, yeah, because now there's all glue and stuff on it. There's no point in masking this. I'll just paint over it again, I think. 
Um, so that's bomb up. I'm worried about the front here too. It's not quite lined up. So I think we're going to have the same problem here where we have to just put some foam in and just repaint it all and stuff. I don't think it's going to hold. Door outside, no problem at all. That just goes in. Touch Again, touch PVA glue just to hold in place while we paint it and we'll hopefully get some tweezers and pull it out uh, when we need to. So that's all good. Now, good news wise, this is looking really good, the exhaust, the nozzle. Now the color is, um, I follow the instructions. So it's LP, I think it's um, two parts brown to one parts metallic gray. And it's just a beautiful color and really like that. And it's just really careful painting, really nice detail, but really careful painting. Just take your time with the instructions and paint them individually and then just super glue them together. And it just fit in, in, in nicely interlaced. Um, you get six pieces, but you only need five. So I have one left over, which I painted. Um, but yeah, the last one, I just had to just give a little glue on each bottom. And then when I put it in, just a little manipulation, just force it in to get the last piece in and no problem at all. Now, I'm not going to do any blue, bluing and red and heat staining and stuff because I really like that color. I really like it the way it is. And I don't want to mess that up. Um, so it's a custom mix, as I said, put instructions. So that's looking really cool. And we definitely don't want to add it now because um, we want to paint the whole aircraft first and get in there and paint the sides and stuff. So we'll paint, we'll do this. Add this at the very end. So I'll put it in my box with the pilot and the rest of the completed pieces. Um, also, lessons learned from previous builds, the last couple of builds, I like lights. So firstly, the light in a bay, um, I keep forgetting to kind of coat the back in silver. So when you peel off the, the masking tape, you can actually see, see silver behind it and not like black primer or white or whatever. So this time around, I remembered. So this little light right here, B2, I think this goes in, in, the, in the nose bay. Um, I just painted the back silver. Um, so once you paint it all and then whatever color it goes, I think it's assume it's white. And then we take away this little masking piece, you'll see silver behind a clear lens. Um, same with these guys, these are the lights to go on the side, each B6 and seven, wing lights. Now, really hard to figure this one out. So they're really small. You couldn't get masking tape to mask the lights. Um, so I used masking fluid, which I think worked okay. It took a few attempts. So I used masking fluid over the lights. And again, just paint the whole thing in silver. Um, to give some backlight, you know, rather again, rather than seeing the plastic, you can see some silver behind light, which look a little better, I think. So um, these two little lights, um, well, I've taken one off already, and I'm actually going to apply this. Once the paint dries, it's not quite dry yet. I'm going to actually put it into the wings. Right now, before I paint and prime it and do it all together, the fuselage color. Last few builds, I've done these separately, these kind of lights, and it just didn't look very good trying to put them in and try, you know, glued them in and stuff once it's all painted it just didn't look look quite right so this time i'm doing it first get the master lights off push them in paint it all at the very end if i just wipe away the masking fluid fingers crossed you'll see the clear lenses on each end with the silver kind of backlighting it Whew. so that's what we've got going on um working on the gear as well which i'll show you shortly so we're getting that um we're 99 ready um, almost ready for paint and um, a few other things little things to do so let me finish those up and we'll be right back all right, so we've got the gear done, no problem at all. Give it a nice matte clear coat because um, it's obviously the part that, that touches the, um, the surface on the, on the, on the um, shelf or wherever it may be presented. So, you know, this takes the wear. So I always make sure I put a good coat on the wheels. And a little wash, um, as always. I mean, I have probably 50, if not more, types of washes, and I'm just using the same thing to keep it easy. Starship Filth, um, Avatar 1, 510. We've talked about this all for weeks or now. Every build I do, it just should grimy generic wash and uh, just works for everything really so why you know why keep it make it complicated just keep it simple and just give it, you know pick out again very kind of um thin wash just pick out some of that detail sorry i'm kind of waving, waving these around there. so these are done um, one decal on each um which we sealed in no problem at all so these are now going to go in the spares box with the um, other parts and one less thing for us to take care of later on in the build now as Oh, nose wheel there too. Can't add a nose wheel because it's going to impede with the, um, the front here, which I'm going to show you. So as expected, um, these parts don't really fit great um, without you know substantial glue and stuff. So it's just a little bit. Um, yeah. Again, if, if you're going to do it, gear up, it's no problem to glue this down. But I'm just going to go ahead, just put some foam in here, um, and call it a day, and we'll just spray over it all. These two are fine. Put the foam in the back. Foam in the exhaust down the intakes and um, lastly I put the canopy on and as you can see I've gave it a quick spray of XF54 which is the cockpit kind of color um, just oh, so, so I don't forget when I get around painting this um, which may be in a day or two 
don't use MRP. I don't use MRP for the cockpit itself, but it's just a little too thin. And I've had issues before with it kind of leaking under masking and stuff. So I just, this time it's a little bit thicker and just a safer bet for me. So quick spray over it. Um, and then we'll come back with pri oh, hit myself. Um, primer over the top. But I hope you agree. It's looking pretty awesome. Um, all together and the um, main assembly's done. We've done a lot of little sub assemblies. See my little box here. All kinds of different things done. We've got the canopy insert we've got nozzle we talked about we've got a pilot there all kinds of things and we've done some of the doors already so we're in really good shape um you know not so much left to do on this build so just going to add a little bit of foams at the back bottom here call this one a day and then when we'll be back next week we'll go ahead and paint it now fun little story i've put these guys in as i mentioned um the lights which are um they do have masking fluid on top and bottom and um so i dropped one and um i dropped it Put one in, the other one I dropped, and I heard the ping. I've got wood for luckily, so I thought it'd be easy to find. And um, hands and knees for 45 minutes, and I think thought to myself, well, I've got another kit. Maybe I can just bust into that one get the part. Looked everywhere, and then kind of gave up. And then I walked to the other side of my house, um, a few rooms down for a corridor. Um, walked back and looked down, and where'd it, where'd it be? This little part here was on the floor, about a corridor and two rooms over in my kind of office um, area. So... No idea how it got there. I've got stuck in my clothing or the bottom of my shoe or my sock or something and it just dropped off over there. But who had known that the other side of the house and that's where it appears as always, right? Always the case. Um, anyway, got it, glued it in, no problem at all. And now we're ready to go ahead and give the whole thing prime and paint next week. So short and sweet this week. Um, not really much to talk about because it's pretty much follows instructions. Um, nothing too crazy to talk about. Just getting prep, prep ready for paint work and um, it's going to look awesome once the paint goes down. So thank you as always for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.